Please welcome to the stage His Excellency Hage Gingob, President of the Republic of Namibia, for a conversation with Bloomberg's Jennifer Zabazaja. Excellency, thank you so much for, for sitting down with me and for joining us today. Um, so, so much to, to talk about, so much um, richness that's happening within Namibia. But I, I wanted to start here. Namibia currently has one of the highest levels of unemployment, unemployment on the continent of Africa. South Africa, of course, has the most. Um, how has the current situation with Russia and Ukraine affected your country? Well, thank you very much. Let me first thank the ruler of this country who, who invited me to be here, and also Bloomberg, mm. giving me this opportunity. Well, firstly, I would like to talk about what I think is a problem in Namibia, that of inequality. Whether other situations happen now or so on, there was inequality. We had apartheid, the ruling Namibia for a long time, we waged a war of liberation, and therefore we freed the country. Now our aim is to unite our people, because exclusivity spells, you know, conflict. Inclusivity spells harmony. I believe in that. So we have to be inclusive in governance, and therefore include everybody, tribe, race, to run Namibia. We are trying to do that. Without that, you can talk about addressing poverty, creating jobs. If there is no good governance architecture, that of what I call third wave African leaders. Because Africans used to have very first wave leaders who were very important people who told us to get up and fight for our freedom. That is Kwame Krumah, Sekuturas, and that. Like little gods, highly respected. Second wave were caught up in a Cold War confusion, one body state, military coups, and so on. The third wave leaders are coming, they're not big people. Physically, I'm big, but I'm not Mandela or Zemnioma. Mm -hmm. So we come through constitutional means, honoring term limits, come through democratic process, right. honoring term limits, dealing with processes, systems, and institutions. So that if I agree with you today, as I'm in government, come and invest there in that country, and I go, it shouldn't stop. Right. But there will be processes, systems, and institutions, institutions our courts. Right. Our courts are very independent. Right. So that's what I will start with. As for current situation that is happening, before this happened, Africa had problems. The, the war, Before the war you are referring to, Africa had problems. I had, we had this inequality question, separation. We are dealing with that. It was not caused by the war. We had whites who had all the privileges, blacks who were left out. Now we are saying we cannot chase the whites out or grab from them and give to the blacks. Let's hold hands and build our country together. That's what we have been doing. Dig into that a little bit more um, because if, of course, the situation was, was not great prior to the war, but I imagine there has been a, an impact and, and something that you, during your term, have had to respond to. So can you dig into s some of the initiatives that you have tried to address when it comes to unemployment, when it comes uh, to inequality? Yeah, I want to make it very clear. Not because of the war, which just started. We have been in that country now, ruling it for about 32 years. And I'm dealing with the systemic inequality that is caused by racial apartheid practices. We are addressing that. We therefore address the education, because education is the key to everything. We put people to schools, but that, what we have done, caused trouble now. Because when people get degrees, they don't have jobs. So they are now having degrees and they are in the streets. It is the thing I have to address before the war even started. And that's why I'm saying inequality everywhere, before the war, everywhere. Inequality is not good. But Africa is left out in certain things, not because of war, before the war. There are Africans who were killed in Africa. We didn't react the way we are reacting now. 
for the African lives. Even during this war, when Africans were trying to cross, some were stopped. Mm. Want to go to Poland. Mm. So I don't want to go to that. Let's talk about Namibia, because if you take me there, I will talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, part of the situation uh, that, has, uh, that has gotten worse, and we know that it has gotten worse, is the climate situation. Um, how has that affected Namibia? Namibia is highly affected. Right now, I was told it was raining and snowing in a desert. Namibia is affected by climate change. It's a semi-desert country, by huge drought and felt, felt fires and so on are taking place. Therefore, also coming now to a new dispensation, we are thinking of now dealing with new things. First, uh, we have a big dam that we have created to provide agriculture in the south, which is dry. And now also we are thinking of having new ways of doing things, thinking of the green hydrogen. Mm. Uh, we want to be champions in that one. We have started, we already offered some people to give us their positions, how they are going to benefit them again. Mm. So they are going to work, they are going to give us their proposals, and we are going to let them go on. It's still open, but that's a new thing that everybody is interested in, and we are willing to welcome them. How do you ensure that Namibians are going to benefit off of that and bigger producers aren't going to come That's in? That's the point. When people are offering what they can do, we have conditions. What are you going to do for Namibians? How many Namibians? Role of Namibians and so on. And what they can also do the ordinary person. Not only creating jobs, but what they can do as a good citizen, corporate citizen. And, and where does oh, there's your water. Um, where, where does oil fit into that as well? Because we've also heard some discussions around Shell and other bigger producers coming in. Are you having any discussions with them, or where are you at at this point in time uh, in producing some of these reserves? We are very lucky to at the end. When I came here, I was told that people have discovered oil and gas. Now, what they are trying to suppose to get off this fossil fuel, we are, we are discovering some big numbers. And we are saying there's no contradiction. The green hydrogen thing is a long-term thing. Hmm. It might be about 20, 30 years. Uh, this one will be shorter term, and definitely we welcome that. I told the uh, Total and those who discovered oil there, we have the Catholic government, that we are very happy about that. We must see how the oil cannot be a curse. It must benefit American people and also those who are investing. What are you telling them to ensure that that is happening? Well, I'm not telling them to say give Namibian shares, no. I'm just saying basic, not me, not us who are the Nova rich. It should be common people. So the housing schemes could be created, it could be creating jobs for them, not just to sit and ask for handouts, mm -hmm. but they are going to create jobs, they will employ our people, they will train them. Already, German government gave us 40, 40 million uh, euros so that we can now train our people in the new energy, uh, new energy mm -hmm. transition, and also to set up an institution mm -hmm. to train Namibians on clean hydrogen. Mm -hmm. These are the things we are quite busy with. Is that in the short term, or is that in, in the long term when you... When you well, it will, it will be short and long term. Short term, because we have to prepare. We it's a new concept. It's a new approach. We, don't know, we didn't know about this green hydrogen and ammonia and so on. So we have to be trained. People have to be trained so that they must participate, not to be observers when they, when they are going to work on it. And Do you need more it? support from the, the global community, especially when you talk about climate and um, when you talk about the, the potential for green hydrogen, um, Africa is, of course, um, a, one of the biggest continents with a growing population. Do you need more support from the West to ensure that Namibians are benefiting and heading in the right direction in, in terms of climate? climate? Yes. See? First, let's talk about uh, this uninvited guest, COVID. COVID made us to realize we are in one universe. It affected everybody, rich, poor, black. So that one made us to realize we are in this universe, we are one. That helped us to think twice about how to help Africa and so on. Africa also to create their own vaccination and so on, mm -hmm. not to depend on others. That's one. 
besides that was this uh, green hydrogen and also Namibia, I say, was a child of international solidarity, midwife by United Nations. So we really are working with all world countries. We invite them to come to Namibia. It's a peaceful country. Although we fought the war, we are holding hands with our brothers, black, white, yellow, and we invite people. We have peace, we have good governance, we have term limits in Namibia, we don't die in office. Uh, my term is about to end, and I'm preparing for that. I'm already a third president in short term of time. So good governance, peace are very important things. How closely are you working with your neighboring countries to, to get on board um, with these initiatives? All of them, because Sasol is very important to us. They will be the off takers, you know, we cannot use all of it. So already they are involved too, they are starting. I talk to them, my, my experts, not me, talk to them. We tell them this is what we are trying to do. We also are informing AU as all, because they were Africans. And they must also come in. If they have expertise somewhere, I'd rather have African to come and work with me than a European. And uh, on this topic, we were talking a little bit about this before. There's been a lot of discussion uh, around uh, Shiro Ramaphosa in, in South Africa and also uh, potential controversy about what happened at his farm and potentially discussions that the two of you have had. Um, can, you, can you share about more what it is that you've, you've talked about? Have you had any conversation about the situation that happened? Namibia was South Africa's colony. We fought and kicked them out. Cyril is the president of South Africa, I'm the president of Namibia. I'm the, I have my farm too. So please, what is happening in South Africa is South Africa's problem. We have answered, I didn't help him anyway. The person crossed over through canoe, he was reported, he went to the arrested, appeared in the court, sent just for that violation, and was sent out. He went out on his own, that my story ends. Why do you think that so much is being talked about it then? Oh, it's a big problem in South Africa, not in Namibia. It's a big issue that you found money, the cash, and so of course that is a what you do man too. That's for him to answer, of course. Mm. But to bring me in, I'm getting caught for Namibia, not for South Africa. Mm. That's a problem in South Africa. <laughs> you kicked and South Africans are dealing with it. And, and let's just finish on um, one last problem that is affecting a lot of the world. And when we talk about inflation and we talk about what um, Namibians are paying right now, what, it, what is it that the government is doing to support Namibians now? Well, firstly, we had a package uh, to help them after this. The government put up about $8 billion to give to small and business people to bail them out during that time. But again, our economy is not doing well ever since I took over. We had a severe drought, the commodity prices went down, and as we are trying to navigate from that, this uh, disease came. But now we are seeing green lights you know, at the end. Uh, growth rate is about going to be 3%. So with that, we are going to take care of our people. That's what we are there for. They are our bosses, our sovereign. Without taking care of them, they kick us out. So to listen to them, they are very angry, of course, the young people whom we educated because we valued education very much, and therefore we sent them to school grade, we subsidized our universities. Now they go and get degrees, they are unemployed. And that is serious cut up, uh, uh, sitting on a powder keg. So we have to be careful. Our young people are very impatient everywhere. And if we don't address that issue, all what I'm talking about will go up in smokes. Yeah, there's a lot to pay attention to. His Excellency, thank you so much uh, for your time, and thanks to everyone for listening. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sir.